there, welcome to Gong Show Garage. Today we're going to show you how to make a fun economical track. What we did is we bought this economical track that takes three C-sized batteries that you put under the cover here, which will give you 4.5 volts. Now that is the track that we got. It's from, it's from Toys R Us and it's called Fastlane. It was about 40 bucks Canadian, so we thought win, lose, or draw, we'd be ahead of the game. So we got it home and I set it up before Christmas so that when the kids came over at Christmas time they could play with it. But what I was noticing, as the cars were going through the loops, if one car was going it would barely make it around the track and you had to have a lot of speed to get through the loop or it wouldn't make it through the loop. So it kind of made it kind of hokey. And then as I got a rhythm of making it going around the track, I got a second person involved to test it with me. And when they put the second car on, when they loaded it up to go through the track, and I tried to load up, both cars would fall so they wouldn't make it through. So I started thinking, wait a minute, let's figure a way around it. 4.5 volts. I went downstairs to my garage, and I found an inverter. Or just basically, when you have on a router or something like that, it converts from AC to DC. You can see the output is 5 volts, so you want to keep it between... 4.5 and if you're scary and you can go to 5.5 volts but you got 2.5 amps or 2.6 amps which gives you a little bit more power so what I was thinking is to keep it stable for both cars so what I did is I put it onto the track here now the best way is just take a set of meters and check and see the polarity I just cut the end off it was just a simple plug-in that goes into the back of any router or whatever, I just cut off the end and I just soldered on. You could just stick the wire around it if you have to, but I like to solder just to make a good solid contact. But as you can see, it's soldered on. What I did is made sure the polarity was correct. If the polarity was reversed, it's not the end of the world. The cars would just go the wrong way around the track and then you just take them off and put them back again. But anyway, what we did is we did that because what we noticed is with the meter, I'm actually getting 5.2 volts. With the batteries in here, I'd be lucky to get, with brand new fresh batteries, 4.5, maybe 4.6. But what was happening is even with brand new fresh batteries, with both cars under load, the voltage drops. And I can simulate that by going, doing this. I'm lift up the ass into the car. You can see I've dropped down to 4.9, which is still way more than I would have gotten off the three C-size batteries. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to try with both the cars under load and you'll see that the voltage stays stable so you know you're getting good power to both cars. An example is, oh, bad driving. But anyway, you get the point. The cars can make it through the loops, playing together at the same time both kids can play. Plenty of power. If you read on the Toys R Us website and stuff like that, a lot of people say the cars fly off the track. All I did is I put some books under the ends to raise up the ends so you're banking it like in NASCAR. <laughs> and I got this piece of wood sheet from Home Depot. And what I did is I hot glued the sides of the track down. Going forward, what I would actually do is shim this up because you can see this is tilting over because I built up the ends here. But the cars are staying on the track. It's on the bed right now. We just did it for video purpose, but it's usually on the floor where it's flat and everything is a little bit more stable. But as you can see, using a simple converter that everybody throws out when they throw away any electronic device, and that's used on printers, routers, all kinds of things, and we always throw them out. So you're repurposing it, so they cost me nothing. I've probably got about 15 of them. And I'm not replacing the batteries all the time. So if the kid wants to come inside here, if the kids want to come inside here and play with it for 20 minutes and not use it for three weeks, I don't have to worry about buying new batteries in three weeks again. Or the kid's not playing with it all because of the fact that they're frustrated that it doesn't perform well. So just a cheap, economical fix like that keeps the kids playing. So anyway, thank you very much for watching Long Show Garage, and I hope you enjoy this video. You're getting the swing of it, though.